So do y'all remember when Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made you well, daughter. Did y'all ever like meditate on that scripture and really think about the words that he said? He said, your faith has made you well. She was having an issue of blood and she had spent all her money on physicians and nothing would cure her. Um, I did a podcast episode on that entire incident, right? It's pretty extraordinary. But in this episode, I just want to talk about faith. Um, Because I think we can overlook faith a lot. We can pray, you know, um, we can declare things and, and manifest things through prayer. But what really is activating that prayer, right? What's the driving force in that prayer? Um, it's faith in, in Yahweh's Holy Spirit. It's faith in God's Holy Spirit. But that faith part has to be there because there are several incidents in the Bible where King Yeshua says, your faith has made you well. So we're going to get into that, guys, talking about faith and how it's the activating force to fuel that, to manifest basically what you're, what you're needing and desiring in real time. All right, let me go play the intro and I'll be right back. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds. Welcome to Surviving the Last Days Podcast. I'm the host, Ashley Shante. You can follow me on Instagram at hashtag Surviving the Last Days Ministry or hashtag Surviving the Last Days Foundation. Um, my YouTube channel, you guys are probably listening on YouTube now, is Surviving the Last Days TV. Subscribe and view some videos on there. Um, also... What else I wanted to tell you guys? I think that was it. But let's look up this scripture real quick. So there is a scripture in Matthew 9, 22. And there are different translations of the, the scripture in Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. But I'll just read um, this um, this new version here, the Bible version. Um... Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. Faith, you know, the definition, right? It's in Hebrews, I think 11, one, that's the biblical definition. Um, but faith is actually something we can't we can't have missing from the equation. When you want something to come to be in your reality, you can pray for it to the most high God. 
But if you're praying without faith, it's like drinking out of an empty cup. There's nothing going to come of it. Um, It's not going to, you know, it's not going to fulfill your thirst because nothing is in the cup. When you pray, you have to fill the prayer up with faith. Pray like you have faith. And what a prayer with faith looks like is you're not asking for anything because you already have faith that the power can do exceedingly and abundantly in your life. You're really not asking anything. You're declaring, if you will. You're, You're decreeing, if you will, because you already know your faith is God is working for you and no matter what bad thing happens he's going to turn it out for good so you already have that faith and already have that mindset that I have faith in Yahweh's Holy Spirit power to make anything possible in my life that is in harmony with his will so when you have that affirmation and you just know that for sure um you play with declaration, right? You play with decree. Uh, you don't. You're not saying, "Hey, can you do this? Would you do this? Are you able to do this?" No, you already know because your father already came through several times over five thousand years in the Bible. So you already know his mo, if you will. You know what I'm saying? You already know Yah's way. And so when you already know a person, well, you're like, "Oh, I know that person gonna come through." So I'm not asking. I'm telling. I'm affirming. I'm declaring, I'm decreeing. Like when that lady touched the hem of Yeshua's garment, she wasn't thinking in her head, you know, um, he possibly may have, you know, she was already knowing. That's why she touched his the hem of his garment. Um, she had that mindset, obviously, where she felt like, hey, he's got a crowd of people around him they're saying he's done some miraculous healing um i just need to touch the hem of his garment so that i can be healed i know i'm gonna be healed when i touch the hem of his garment because he done done a lot of stuff and i believe in the power that he's using so i'm gonna touch the hem of his garment so that i can be healed and when she did that her faith um her faith in that holy spirit power in King Yeshua's administering of the Holy Spirit power, she, because her faith did that, it made her well. She was healed. She didn't ask. She didn't, she didn't even ask, "Can I touch the hem of his garment?" She just went through the crowd, touched the hem of his garment. She didn't say, um, "Is it?" She didn't contemplate it like, "May I'm gonna wait and see what he does the next time?" or baby she was on the go she had a mission she's like i will be healed i am going to touch the hem of his garment because i believe in the power that he's using that comes from yahweh the god above so she didn't have a doubt in her mind she didn't question about it will i be healed am i gonna be healed no she said i'm gonna touch the hem of his garment and 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 she was healed because when you read the whole um scripture Yeshua turns around like there was a power released for me who touched me you know and then he found out who touched him and he's like your faith has made you well daughter he already knew she was having an issue she didn't have to say what the issue was they didn't talk about the issue y'all just knew that she I mean Yeshua just knew that she touched him she had faith in the power that he was administering to people and healing people uh, with and so she was made well And what does that mean for us as believers in Christ and as the body of Christ and as kingdom seekers, right? Kingdom preppers. I think that means that we got to change the way we pray. Um, I recently changed up the way I pray. Like, I don't ask for stuff. I declare and decree because I already know you have the power, Yahweh. And I already know you turn things for good. And I already know your plans for me. You have plans to bless me. I already know. So why am I asking with doubt? Why am I thinking, oh, well, can you do this? If possible, you can do this. Why am I not praying with authority? 
why am I not? Because did Yeshua not tell the disciples who were humans that greater things are you to do when the Holy Spirit is left with you, right? We have the Holy Spirit. I feel like if you have a relationship with Yahweh and you've you've exercised faith that you believe in the Old Testament and New Testament scriptures and you desire a righteous life and you desire that relationship with Yahweh on your spiritual journey, then you've tapped into the Holy Spirit. Amen. You received it because when King Yeshua was crucified and went up to heaven, that was left for us to comfort us, to counsel us, to direct us because we weren't going to have King Yeshua here. He he descended. He's made his atonement for our sins. Amen. So he's already left and went up to heaven and he's done his job. He's done his ministry until he returns. So we got the Holy Spirit until then. And so with the Holy Spirit activated as an activating force of Yahweh and, and the power it has done over the years for people present day and people in Bible times, that's enough evidence right there for us not to be second guessing in our prayer. We need to pray with authority and it's not being arrogant. It's not being voiceful. It's just letting y'all know, I know the things you have done and I know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly in my life. And for whatever I'm needing or requesting, I know that you can, you will manifest it in my life. Amen. Because you want nothing but blessings for me. Okay. You, you want me to live a righteous life. You want me to live a life of glory that glorifies you. Y'all don't want us to live a life that doesn't glorify him. So if you're supposed to be a kingdom person and you're supposed to be a part of the body of Christ, pray for the things that exemplify that. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that if you are a part of the body of Christ, that your life has to be full of material things and successful with nice cars and nice houses. No, but you do have to have that kingdom spirit a pure heart a pure mind and you do have to have that um fearless way of thinking and um you do have to be humble but at the same time uh praying with authority a praying with authority and living an exemplified kingdom life looks like a life of purity basically a life of i'm satisfied you know a life of you know, on the spiritual journey, you can't be caught up on material things. But in the spiritual journey, yes, you need to pray for things that you need while we're in the land of captivity. And just know that those things are secondary, that Yah is ultimately all you need. But overall, pray with strong faith, right? But you also can have faith the size of a mustard seed, as Christ said. And you have the ability to move mountains. So... So do this exercise, guys. Next time you pray, pray with authority. Pray with declaration. Declare and decree it. Because know for sure that your father has plans to bless you and wants to bless you. Know for sure that your, fa- that your father wants to provide for you. You know, he is the ultimate provider. His name is Yahweh Yara, as Abraham called the place where he um, was about to sacrifice his son. Yehovah Yara or Jehovah Jireh because the Lord will provide so always know that when you pray tap into that faith because at that point you can just imagine Christ looking at you while you're saying your prayer and say your faith has already made you well daughter it's already been done your faith has already made you well son it's already been done and that's literally what amen means at the end of a prayer. So be it. It shall be done. I mean, don't think about it. Don't come back for it. Just be about it now. Live like that prayer is already answered. In the mighty name of above all names, King Yeshua HaMishiach. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I'm going to sign off. Just a little short episode. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like this video. Share it on your platforms. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye for now.